All right. Hello and welcome to Inverticast. I am Leah from Tarantulia, as always. With me is Simon from the Mantis Garden. Hello, Simon. Hello, Leah. How are you today? Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> we were having quite a morning. But yeah, just just technical difficulty city, I think. It's just uh, terrible. I've just had a hatching in here. <laughs> and uh, I came rushing over to have a look because I thought I'd spotted it across the room. And I kicked my camera, my, my camera stand over and uh, broke the camera. So that's why, I, if we're late, that's why it's my fault. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> I know it. Like, and, and it's not like it's just one or two little babies. It's like a whole bunch of them, right? So, uh, I, I mean, hundreds. Well, luckily it was a... It was a Dead leaves, so there's, there's a there's a good fifty though in there. Oh, okay. So well, it's cool. Still, still a, a scary amount. I've got another roof that's just splitting. It looks like it's going to hatch. Probably <laughs> now. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, of course. Okay, so today we are talking about these little guys. These are praying mantises, as most people know them. Um, but they are mantodi, uh, or at least that's like the general scientific, you know, family sub sub classification of them. And so the word mantis is actually derived from a Greek word meaning a prophet. So one who is a seer or a, a prophet, somebody who's like in touch with the spiritual world. And there are actually quite a few cultures who believe that mantises have supernatural um, abilities and like properties, which is pretty fascinating. So this here is my juvenile shield mantis. You can kind of see why they're called a shield mantis because they've got this part. Oops, sorry. They've got this little part right here that looks like a shield. Um, but there are how many shield species like there's there's quite a lot but uh there's i think it was 32 rhombodera so you know you, you've got i don't know which one you've got there is it a rotunda or something uh you know i'm not sure it was just labeled as a shield mantis and i feel bad that i don't know like this, the exact this, this is oh, uh, yeah. an adult female kirby eye which is again beautiful uh, but this is this is one of the reasons why we shouldn't use um common names because you know you go to pair them for instance yours and mine right not, because they're completely different species but they're both under the name of shield mantis so it's always best to learn the scientific name absolutely i agree uh, with that because I, I i don't plan on pairing her with with anything just because like you said i don't know the exact scientific species and i'm not you know i'm not trying to make hybrid <laughs> <laughs> hybrid creatures like no no good no good and they will <laughs> actually mate with each other so uh, it is it is quite scary because that is a possibility i believe I, 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 as you know i keep mantis out like this one that are out all the time and i yeah. have two different completely different species of uh, Rombodera, and I have caught them uh, mid coitus, shall we say, to use a big bang theory term, uh, which is, uh, but luckily nothing came of it, uh, but it could have done, you know. Right. And then I you, it, oh, will you come hang out with me on my shoulder? <laughs> oh, she wants to be on my face. That's cool too. Um, so obviously, these guys are, they're pretty harmless to people. Um, I mean, they can bite, and it's, you know, not the most comfortable bite in the world. But as you can see, I've got my little girl here on my face. Like, she's just kind of chilling. Um, but, yeah, all right. So <laughs> let's talk about what mantises are. So they are, they are an insect, as we know. Uh, and they, there are, like, 2,400 like described and known species of mantises across the entire world. Um, so, I mean, they 
live virtually everywhere except for like Antarctica and, and the very far north and the UK. <laughs> yeah. Which it's was very unlucky. We're one of the few places on the planet that doesn't have mantis. Right. It's very sad thing. <laughs> but you know. Thank you. Bazan says that uh his his female giant Asian chills on his face. Yeah, it's just like mine here. <laughs> um so yeah, so the first record of mantises were on the fossil record about 35 million years ago. Um I don't know where she's going and I'm just she's just okay. Anyway, so 35 million years ago and they are related to cockroaches. Um and distantly crickets and grasshoppers. So that's kind of, that's pretty interesting. Let's see. Oh, she's yeah. just chilling. She likes it right there. There we go. Somebody's had it to jump off the top onto the <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and as, you know, as people can see, mantises are a really fun arthropod uh, or invertebrate pet because they are so interactive. They're they're easy to like take care of for the most part. They're you know they're pretty chill. Like they'll come and hang out with you. Um, you can handle them very easily, and and they're just fun. They're fun to watch. They're fun to to enjoy. Like as you can see, she's she's doing that little dance that they do where they kind of move side to side. She's not so much anymore, but you know they're curious little creatures. They have um, their triangular face. So that triangular face and those very large eyes. Um, and of course, they're called praying mantises because of the raptoral uh, forelegs that um, kind of give them, give, give them the, the look of praying. They look like they're praying. Um, so when they have their forelegs or these little guys here, when they have them up and close to their eyes, they actually look like they are praying. So that's probably one of the reasons why they were given the mantis name, as in like the prophet, because they're constantly praying. I don't know. <laughs> if you look at some of the, if you look at some of the other names for mantis in other languages, or even in in Latin for certain uh, mantis, you'll see uh, the connection. Uh, if you look at uh, like the common European mantis, which you have over there as well, mm -hmm. is uh, mantis religiosa, which is religious mantis, mm -hmm. of course. And the uh, Portuguese name for them is uh, Luvados. 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 Which means pray to God. So, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it, it sort of sticks out like a sore thumb. I have actually seen people like praying mantis, I think pray, P R E Y. And oh. uh, she's obviously incorrect. But uh, yeah, that's uh, there's quite a, there's quite a few of them out there if you look at the Latin names or if you look at the the local names of what they call praying mantis. Uh, and they all seem to be connected with uh, religion and praying in, in, in some in some way, shape or form, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. I I definitely agree with you on that. Um, so okay, so these guys are they're medium to large insects. So I think the smallest mantis is about two, maybe three inches. Like uh, smaller. You know. <laughs> smaller. Yeah, they do get smaller. Yeah, yeah, they get smaller. I've got one here actually that's smaller than that. Um, this is called an apicalis, which is uh, a flower mantis. She's a very, very tiny mantis. She's about an inch and a quarter. Oh, wow. So she's, she's really, that's an adult, by the way. How uh, cool. But there are smaller than that. There are smaller. But yeah, she's, uh, well, no, good girl. Go on. So yeah, there are, there are some quite tiny ones. And there's some pretty large ones as well. Like, um, like this girl, she'll probably get close to five to six inches like pretty pretty large size um and of course in the states we have a couple of species that are they don't get massive but they do get about four four and a half to five inches or so but still that's a pretty pretty good size uh mantis for sure 
uh, the Eden for the Chinese mantis. Oh, right. Seven inches. <laughs> yeah. Just so over they, seven inches for the, for the Chinese mantis, which is uh, pretty monstrous. There's, there's absolutely a mantis that, like, nobody's managed to get yet, but that's supposed to go to nine inches. So, wow. But I, I have to see that with my own eyes, you know. Right. But that's uh, a possible mantis. I also heard that there was a, a blue mantis, uh, a, what is it called, a, a haiju, haiju, haiju yes, it's, yeah. a new, it's a newly described species, it's a hydula species, uh, blue pop pow. I've uh, been around for quite a while. Um, yeah? All it is, basically, is, you know, the giant Asian? Okay. Oh, that's it. There's, there's nothing really uh, tremendously interesting about them that's so different. Sure. Just a, just a different color. These guys actually, or shield mantis, these, these can actually be blue as well, which is uh, something that's pretty rare uh, as, as far as I can tell so far. I've had one that's been blue. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully this time, the next babies of these, I'll get some blue ones. Oh, oh. Yeah, as you can see, I've got a kitten in one hand and a mantis in the other. It's it's funny. <laughs> so, all right, um, they are really cool though. I love mantises. I love their I love their front forelegs here because they are highly adapted to catching prey and then bringing it in close because they will eat their prey live. Clearly, um, I mean we all most most. Invert keepers know that that's what they do, but if you look real close on those front forelegs, you can actually see the little spines on the undersides there. And those are, like I said, highly developed to be able to um, <laughs> capture that prey and hold on to it and eat it. Well, yeah. So that's, that's pretty that interesting. Like a shark's teeth point back, they, they point back as well. So once they grab it, there's no way out for the prey. If you've been gripped by them, the only way to get away is if it lets go of you. Um, otherwise, it's game over. Right. I, that's including fingers. <laughs> they hurt. They hurt. The bigger ones really, really hurt. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I mean, uh, her feet right now, I mean, they don't, they're not painful but they are kind of itchy so i'm wondering if are there um are there spines on their little feet as well no the, the, the little hairs it's a little hooks and hairs it's, it's the same as a tarantula oh okay there's on the end of, so they can the sticky pads maybe most most insects have some kind of hook or hair that helps them to you know grab yeah well that's Jeez. that's amazing I didn't know that their feet were like tarantula. This kitten. And uh, Bazan like says that cats are Simon's most favorite animal. We all know that that's not true. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Only if they're in a blender. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So these guys are also uh, masters of disguise. Oh, yeah. So, and that actually brings us into. Uh, some of our some of the most interesting species that I found of mantises, um, and this this is another one of those highly adapted uh, like attributes of a mantis is that they, like I said, are masters of disguise. So they actually are evolved to look like leaves, sticks, flowers, thorns, like all sorts of stuff because most mantises are ambush predators. So what that means is they basically, oh, she's trying to bite me. Okay. Uh, is they, bas <laughs> they basically will hang out in plants and trees and wait for another insect or something to come by. And then they swoop in and get it. And so that camouflage um, helps and allows them to do that. Um, because, you know, if you look like a leaf, another insect isn't going to suspect that you're like a predator 
especially if you look like a leaf of the plant that you're on, right? It's pretty so, much the same as uh, you've got the, the, the double edged sword there because they use that for hiding to catch the prey and they also use it for hiding to avoid being preyed on. So you get oh, both, yeah, you get both uh sides of I, I'm worried about that. I wanted to get one now, now, but I'm just worried about that Kirby because they are so aggressive. But uh, this guy, this one's only a sub adult. But this guy, if, if it will come out, you might get all cheeky with it. Um, this is this is called a macromantis. And they have this ability to flatten themselves completely, which he's probably not going to do now. <laughs> oh, that sounds interesting, though. How cool. But, but generally, they can, they can absolutely flatten to a leaf, and you cannot see them. It's like you're winding up. Oh, wow. I don't want to wind him up too much, but you know. <laughs> I've noticed that uh, Mavis here, we named her Mavis, we, um, she occasionally will flatten herself out as well, but uh, probably not to the extent that. This, 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 this is flat. I mean, when I say flat, it looks like it's been ironed. It, it wow. Looks, it actually looks like. Um, it's not going to do it, is it? Is that is is? I think it's just excited about being out for a minute. But give him a minute. I've got, I'll keep <laughs> it out, and when he does it, he will do it. <laughs> Where's my little brush? I've got a little brush somewhere. I don't know when it is, but and generally that that would. Uh, or orange cat vibes right now because Apollo is a menace. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, a menace. Nice. <laughs> It's not going to bother, but generally it will. It will go super flat, <laughs> like like a piece of paper. You wouldn't believe it. It's it's unbelievable. But it's once he's on a plant and he does the flat thing under on the underside of a leaf. Wow, you'd never you know can, he was there. You can look through the plant twenty times and can't find him, and he's been staring at you all the time. That's cool. I, I get that quite a lot with the ones that are out. You know, they'll, they'll hide somewhere. I, I just, I have no idea where they are. And they've been looking at me all the time. <laughs> because they just stay still, so still. And they're blending in with whatever they're on. Uh, right. Dead leaves are fantastic for that. I should, I should have got the dead leaf down. I've got one up there. Um, very careful. She's uh, getting on a bit. But he's, he's, he doesn't seem to want to behave and do what I say. doesn't perform on demand, this guy, evidently. He must evidently. not feel very threatened with you. How cute. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> this, one, this one was on an ornament on my, uh, above my desk. So, come on, babe. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Laura says, um, forget the bugs. I want the kitty. <laughs> She she doesn't want to leave there. I don't, I don't want to annoy her. <laughs> she's, she's oh. quite, um, <laughs> come on, good girl. I'm frightened of that. When they, when they get older, I get frightened of the pads on the feet. As once they lose the sticky on the feet, it's uh, it's game over pretty much for. Them. As you see, if you can imagine that on the the forest floor. With a lot of leaves, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that though? Yeah, yeah. Raise them up. There you go. Yeah, we could see that. That's cool. That's really cool. But that's, yeah, they look like. I mean, they look like leaf litter. Well, you know, on the forest floor, they just look like you know, some fallen trick, leaves. And the other brilliant trick they have is if <laughs> approached by anything that they're afraid of which is very little um like a bird or something they will play dead they will just literally stiffen up flatten out and drop to the floor and that's it you know and then they will stay there for a long time just not moving and that would be probably why they call it a death leaf because that's exactly these, what it is 
So, so is there know. is there a term? Is there a scientific term for the? Um, I call it a little dance that they do, or the the movement that they make while they're like sitting. Usually they sit kind of still, but every now and then they'll kind of do this little rocking kind of back and forth motion where it it looks like they're part of the plant, part of the tree, maybe like kind of just blowing in the breeze. That's well, that's the idea. I mean, stick insects do it as well. Uh, they just rock from side to side to make it look like they're blowing in the breeze. Uh huh. Um, if there is a term, which I'm sure there is, because you know scientists are like they sit up on it, wiggling from side to side. They'll come up with some crazy word for it, uh, but I don't know it. I don't know what it is because I always just call it a dance. <laughs> it, 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 generally speaking, to your average person, and you start using scientific words. Um, okay. They Sorry just, about that. <laughs> What's that cat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my my kitten Apollo. He is fascinated with my ear earbuds right now. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I can't actually see the screen, so oh. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor <I> Cybert. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so they have the large eyes and their triangular shaped heads. Um, but another fascinating thing about their heads and their and their body, essentially, is that they can move their heads at like 180 degrees all the way around, which is pretty cool because um, I don't think we can do that. I think we can get pretty close to 180. We get like 160-ish. I, I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, if you if you've got pretty good flexibility, then maybe. But <laughs> you know, your neck isn't like messed up like mine and Simon's, right? But um, <laughs> oh goodness, Apollo. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But these guys, they can move their head in a one hundred eighty degree turn, um, which of course, of course, helps them to be able to see um, and be able to like observe their surroundings and also capture that prey or those other smaller insects that they eat right because they have such really great eyesight as well they have very highly developed eyesight i think that's true for all mantises it is it is uh mantis and jumping spiders are like the only real mm -hmm. uh books i'm gonna call it books because uh well, they're not both insects, so I just call them bugs, after bugs, uh, that have such good eyesight. Um, <laughs> and also, both of those are tested in the lab quite frequently to to learn about their eyesight. Uh, and recently, there was there was an experiment done with mantis to find out if they have depth perception like we do, uh, and they don't. It's uh, it's better than ours. So mm -hmm. and. The way they did this was by gluing uh, red and green shades on the mantis, which I think is a bit cruel, but you know what scientists are like. Um, it's the name of, in the name of science. Yeah, <laughs> and, and test it, testing the depth perception of, of, of the actual mantis. Uh, and it, it works out that it's, it's better than humans. So, you know. That's amazing. If, if it was bigger, they would be our overlords, basically. Yeah, right. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't mess with them if it, was, if it was as big as a dog. I would go nowhere near them because they they would mess you up. They would. Yeah, really... I mean, uh, there are so many like science fiction movies where the monsters are based off of mantises. Essentially, like um, I believe one would be Super. Uh, no, not Super Troopers, but uh, what's that called? The Space Something Troopers. I forget what it's called. I'm so sorry, but uh, it's a great movie, but like, you know, it's sci-fi and, you know, humans are on, I think they're on Earth and these aliens come down and they have to fight them. Um, Starship Troopers. Thank you, Baz. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Baz Ant with the win. <laughs> but yeah, um, so Starship Troopers, they come down and the alien creatures look a lot like mantises. Which is pretty there's fascinating. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Um, they're actually based on this one. 
Yeah. Well, what do you know? So that's been based on the Death of Carter on the, on the Death of Atlantis. That's that the, the head and etc. Is, is based on it, and the shield on the back and everything. So you know, that, that's why they look a bit like Mantis and act like Mantis. So. <laughs> that's cool. And Laura wanted to know the name of my kitten. His name is Apollo, like like the Greek ancient Greek sun god Apollo. Um, well, I don't know. He wasn't really a sun god. He was. He was the uh, god that would bring in the sun in the morning and then bring it back down at night. So he was in charge of sunrises and sunsets, um, which uh, I might be mistaken on that because I'm not an expert on Greek mythology. But either way, Apollo was a perfect name for him because he's cute and he explores and he's kind of orange. <laughs> All right, get back on to topic, right? <laughs> So, speaking of mythology and folklore, I did happen to find a really cool story um, out of Africa, actually, about mantises. And so, what it is, basically the story goes that uh, people and mantises were eating their food raw. So, as they caught their food, they would eat it raw. And they would sleep in shelters and at night and all these things, right? But Mantis saw that the ostrich was eating food that smelt different and it smelt delicious. So the Mantis was curious, like, what kind of food? What is happening, right? So the Mantis uh, got closer to ostrich and observed ostrich for a while to find out what was going on. And what the Mantis found out was that ostrich was eating like seeds and nuts, but instead of eating them raw, ostrich would take a little bit of fire from underneath his wing and put the put the food in the fire and then eat it that way after, you know, after he burnt it. So basically he was cooking his food. Um, so <laughs> when he was finished, he would put the fire back underneath his wing. And so Mantis saw this and said he... So he decided to devise a plan uh, to basically capture some of this fire. Um, so the mantis told Ostrich, come, I know a tree that's covered with beautiful orange delicious plums. So he basically tricked the ostrich to this tree. And, you know, the ostrich started eating the plums. And the ostrich was, was overjoyed because they were delicious, absolutely. But the mantis said, well, the best ones are actually at the top of the tree. So you, you need to reach up and, and reach higher. And so as the ostrich was doing just that, the mantis snatched some of the fire from underneath ost the ostrich's arms. And that's when, <laughs> so that's when um, mantis actually gave the fire to, to humans. So mantis was observant kind of a trickster and he took a little bit of ostrich's fire and gave it to the people right so ostrich after this was so ashamed that he lost some of his fire that he never lifted his wings ever again and that's also why the ostrich doesn't fly so really interesting folklore um i did also find a poem an ancient Chinese poem about a mantis. I, I decided not to recite it today just because it's it was kind of long. But it was essentially like what you said, that um, mantises are seen as lucky. And uh, in Latin and Greek, uh, mantis basically means prophet or uh, seer. So somebody who's, you know, wise and, and thoughtful, they're observant and maybe even in touch with, uh, you know, the supernatural world or the spirit world or things like that, right? And so they considered for mantises to have supernatural powers. Um, and this was actually true for ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, and Assyria. So quite a few uh, very ancient or old cultures believed that mantises are unique and wise and, and supernatural in that way. Did, do you know any other uh, folklore or? Not a sausage. I, I, <laughs> I, 
never, I never actually bothered to, to check the law. I knew they was lucky in China. Uh -huh. uh, I knew that the, the ancient Egyptians used to mummify them, uh, which I thought was amazing. That is interesting. Uh, apart from that, I, I, I suppose probably the main reason is because we don't have them here. Okay. Like I, I know lots of folklore about hedgehogs, about foxes and things like that, stuff we have, but no, nothing about mantis. Um, and I, 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 I'm always too bothered uh, trying to learn more about the actual mantis than the, the, the folklore around it. Right. So, yeah. I, 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 that, was, that was a new story to me. Um, but I, I can see it because I, I've heard a very, very similar story uh, for Ed Jobs. So, okay. And uh, that was from uh, Africa. So huh. they, they have a better imagination than we do, put it that way. Yeah, clearly. I mean, <laughs> I never gone there. <laughs> they didn't have TV and books and stuff to distract their brains and minds from, you know, exploring that that side of their imagination. So I, I, I imagine, too, that a lot of folklore and and um, like legends and myths and stuff, they they come from that kind of ancient wisdom. Like in in the stories and stuff, there's always like a lesson. So it's pretty fascinating. I I love when inverts and you know arthropods and stuff are are the topics of mythology because you know you learn things that you you wouldn't otherwise think were were important. You know, so. Yeah, I, I also believe that here in the States, a lot of people see mantises as lucky. So I, maybe that's, you know, something that kind of transferred to the States from from China or, you know, from from the Asian, uh, the Asian continent there, or the folklore there. Um, but another creature that, you know, it, it can also be seen as kind of lucky here in the States would be katydids. A lot of people say that it, you know if you get a katydid or a mantis that lands on you that it's a prosperous it's a sign of prosperity it's a sign of you know good fortune essentially so it's very fascinating i think it's really cool that uh so many different cultures view mantises in that way i think i would i think i definitely would i mean a lot of these guys I, I, there's so many, so many variations, and there's so many variations of them in this room, let alone within the genus. Uh, just in this room, I, I've got so many different looking mantises. Um, it always, always amazes me the differences. I was, I was going to ask you how many different species of mantis do you have? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, but I've got quite a few singles as well, you see, that um, are that sent to me. So I've got random ones that I never mention. Okay. Uh, those ones just become pets uh, more than anything. Like I've got glass mantis here, which is pretty much a pet. It wow. Is, it's the only one I've got. So it, it's a random, but again, a, a completely weird sort of creature if you look at it. Uh, uh -huh. I can't show you. It's too small. They are tiny. They really are tiny. Wow. And if you looked at it, it would take quite a while to figure out that it was an actual mantis. <laughs> so, it, you know, it's, it's not that. Well, I, the big green ones I call them mantis classic, which is, okay. is, is the one you. Always like the one of, I have. Yeah, when you think of a praying mantis, it's big, it's green, it's sitting there like, you know, mm. that's a mantis classic. But I mean, there's so many of them, and they all look different, act different, live in different places. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Like you've got mantis that look like ants. You've got they're yeah, not particularly mantis. They're, they're mantis flies is another thing which is very closely related. So you might as well call them mantis uh like you've got the the wasp mantis which is just looks like a wasp it's amazing 
Um, that is amazing. Uh, and you, you, you've got like, well, cryptic mantis in here, and you've got your tiny little flower mantis, and you've got your big, right? I call them shield mantis because they're all big, so let's let's keep them all. Then you've uh -huh. got your African mantis, which is uh, the Spodra mantis. There's so many of them. I think there's 27 different species of those wow. uh, throughout Africa, and you know, still to be found because there's places like in the Congo where there's been trouble for that long that nobody wants to go there and research anything. So there's plenty of places uh, in Africa and in South America where nobody goes simply because it's a terrifying place to be. And not yeah. because of the animals, but because of the people. Because of the people, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like, South America, you can go say, okay, I'm going in South America. I'm going to go through the Amazon. I'm going to go and look for a new species or two. Next thing mm -hmm. you know, you're open the board and you're being kidnapped. So people people don't want to, you know. They don't, don't want to risk it. No, it's it, it's a it's a scary thought. It's a scary yeah. thought. So there's a lot of stuff out there we, we don't get to see uh, yet. Uh, right. We've got the other problem of putting the actual forest down. I mean, we just you know these these the guys who've put in forest down acres and acres of forest per day they're not actually checking what's living in that forest before they're cutting it down they're just going in and cutting it down that's it it's gone mm -hmm. and there's some species that long we live in small areas or on certain trees and once you cut them down you've just lost that species right i mean that could be that could be like the cure for cancer and and it's gone <laughs> like we come up have killing ourselves i mean this is it's it's ridiculous but yeah that's just human nature isn't it it's uh it's what makes the most money mm -hmm. now yeah versus what's better for us in the future we're more interested in what's good now than mm -hmm. then and, and it's it's killing off uh lots of things there was some mantis found this week uh which was another species of dragon mantis really i can remember the latin name for this so you have to forgive me well i, I know use... um the dragon mantis from brazil is called the stenophylla conigera that's it or... we found another one Ooh. this week we found another, another species so same genus but a different species okay so, so the stenophylla was... Yeah, that was found in Brazil, and that was in there's a there's a a massive section of uh, Brazilian Amazon that is protected, wow. uh, and that Good. is okay to go in. Like scientists can go in there and have a boot around and see what they can find. Right. It, it's 2024. So okay, so how there. many how many dragon mantis species are there? Because I don't know this, and I know that um, no idea. I actually, yeah. <laughs> well, right. I mean, well, and I was going to highlight the dragon mantis because it is so unique. It's very interesting looking. Like, um, obviously, we call it a dragon mantis because it kind of yeah. looks like a dragon, uh, but it's it's not green. Or you know, I'm sure there's probably a variation that is green, but it's not like classical. Um, it doesn't have like the the it has three segments but it's not the same shapes like these guys they're more this abdomen is a bit wonky <laughs> right they, yeah. it almost looks like they have scales like you would yeah, think a it, reptile or or a dragon would right yeah they're I, really I, I pretty like, i don't like them i think they're ugly <laughs> <laughs> i think they're really cool they're so unique I, I they are unique yeah they are very unique uh, i mean as a as a, a mantis to look at yeah that, yeah right <laughs> that, that's as far as it goes for me as, as a mantis to look at i go oh yeah that's unique but uh if i was gonna have one i, I you know i wouldn't pick i wouldn't pick a dragon mantis no no I'm, I'm a classic green and mean guy i like big green mean that's it that's that's my 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 thing yeah, the classic mantis, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's cool. Absolutely the one I fell in love with, and that's the one I will stick to. Uh, 
the cryptic mantis is also is probably my favorite mantis out of all of them uh out of all those species this little guy is probably my favorite which is that's an adult an adult female so they're not massive R raise her up just a little there we go okay oh that, she's beautiful that is probably my my favorite mantis um don't ask me why i have no idea I <laughs> i've got loads of these uh i'm just breeding them at the moment um nice always always get attached to them mm. the, the, the ones that I'm, I'm actually using to breed with i always get attached to the cryptic mantis and they always get a name whereas you know most of the others just stock you know but those sure. always get a name and i i just I don't know, there's something about them that floats my boat really well liliana says that she thinks the ugly ones become cute looking and i agree i think some of the ones that people think are kind of ugly are actually the most pretty and, and kind of cute ones like and, and that makes sense because liliana and i are also the tarantula lovers yeah <laughs> so of course we think the you know Okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I have to do this. It's really warm in here. Um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, yeah, that was it. The ugly ones. Uh, Orchid Mantis is another one. I I don't find them very appealing, but a lot okay. of people do. But the nymphs, when they hatch, I find them fascinating the little black things with red heads and they're just absolutely amazing little nymphs to look at but the oh, the, uh, the orchid mantis yeah the orchid but you know they, they don't really uh the, the adults don't really do anything for me really I, I actually think like your your apicalis and your walbergi there are much more attractive mantis who are the flower mantis I absolutely love the pseudo Creobotra, uh, Botra, uh, Wallenbergi. Okay. I love yeah. spiny flower. Yep, yeah. spiny flower. I think yeah. they are really, really cool. Like they are just, they're so pretty because they do look like a spiny flower. Like yeah. they have all these spikes. They almost look like Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Yeah. <laughs> just not blue. And to top it all off, they've got an emoji on the wings. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's they've like, got a oh, little yeah. smiley face or a number nine, right? Like there's yeah. two of them that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot actually. There's quite a lot of uh, flower mantis, but uh, yeah, those those ones they've all got some kind of design on the wings, but different smiley faces. I I, I think this one's too small. I haven't got a larger flower mantis. I love that you called right. it an emoji. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's. I, 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 no, I haven't. I thought I had. I haven't. And it's gone. Uh, but yeah, the the like she's too small to show you on on here because my camera's knackered. Sure. Uh, but the, the the other ones you can really see the the smiling face on there, or or with the lack of uh, eyes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah. Smiling face. You've got there's, there's loads of them. I mean, there's, there's quite a few in India. Uh, I think there's about eight or nine different ones throughout uh, India and going up through Asia and that. So there's there's quite a few to look at or look for. I uh, I believe it, and I I mean some of the prettiest inverts come from India. I think. Yeah. Like so, like some of the prettiest tarantulas come coming out of Sri Lanka and and India and. Um, the postlotheria genus of tarantulas, you know, I mean, they're they're gorgeous. Those um, black ones? No, they're uh, they're the blue ones, and they have kind of striped legs, and each one usually has yeah. some kind of yellow marking on their uh, tibials and and their femur femurs. Yeah. So they're they're really pretty. There's, there's, um, there's a lot out there, though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, it's vast. The, the country is just absolutely 
massive and it goes there's, there's desert there's you know there's oh. jungle there's rainforest uh, there's there's mountains and snow she's trying so, to bite me <laughs> sorry she's trying to eat me <laughs> is he a mantis yeah oh good that's all right don't do that i thought i thought it was a cat for a minute no uh, don't feed that uh, <laughs> now you've got this you've got this vast different environments uh, and climates to go at and it creates all these different species yeah, so, there we go she's not eating me anymore <laughs> thankfully <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i just it was really okay. funny I, well, anyway i just got I, I get i get very excited when people talk about the the different mantis and i i end up forgetting about Somewhere. Yeah, no, there. I mean, the the orchid mantises, for whatever re I mean, probably because they are really pretty and they kind of have that pink coloration. Um, you know, they've become really popular in recent years. I mean, um, uh, uh, here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, they did a, they did a um, an exhibition called Bugs, and of course, their their highlighted bug was the orchid mantis. I mean, they were just, they, they really hyped up this orchid mantis, you know, um, which, I mean, I'm not surprised because it is really quite beautiful, but I was like, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's just one of hundreds of really cool mantises that you could have focused on. And, you know, I, I don't know. I think it was just, you know, they're trying to, trying to catch on with the kiddos or something like that, you know, big, colorful, beautiful thing. Um, but I, I really feel like there was kind of a missed opportunity. But don't tell them I said that, okay? <laughs> it's either, honestly, everywhere you go, it's either the, the orchid or the ghost mantis. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's, that, they're the only two that they bang on about. Uh, I mean, even David Attenborough, when he did the bat mantis, he did the orchid mantis. And right. it's like, please stop doing the orchid mantis. They're so dull. Right. <laughs> really add, yeah it looks pretty does it move never you know no yeah <laughs> no I, I and they are they are it. pretty they're pretty difficult to take care of too because they do require like quite a bit of humidity and you know warm oh he's such a purr purr i'm sorry he's purring <laughs> it is uh it, it has been a problem with uh especially the ladies going out uh the first thing they do, they'll say, because I get this a lot, they'll message me and they go, do you have any orchid mantis? And I'll mm -hmm. say, have you had a mantis before? And nine times out of ten, the answer is no. And I'm like, well, I suggest you don't start with an orchid mantis. Right, no, certainly and not. This, and then I won't sell them, and then they'll go somewhere else, buy an orchid mantis, it dies. Within days. <laughs> you know. It, it, it's just... It's just so irritating. I, a lot of sellers will not sell to uh, brand new, never brand new keepers. A, yeah, so yeah. Of before you'd risk it if they said, "Oh yeah, I keep spiders and I keep you know other inverts." Yeah, sure. You've got this. You've got this mentality. You're thinking, well, if the guy's keeping these other things, then then it should be easy to keep this. And well, that research that you know they're willing to put the research in rather right. than someone who just wants a novel pet. Right. I I don't want to sell to somebody who wants a novel pet. If I'm gonna to sell to someone, I want someone who's gonna, you know, when I let it go out of my pet, I want to know that they're gonna look after it. Right. And it's 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 not gonna be there for three weeks. Of uh, course. Dead. It's it's no good to anybody, is it then? No, yeah, no, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, do that due diligence. Like, if you see a mantis that you're interested in, uh, you know, do the research, find out where it comes from, find out what kind of climate it, you know, is adapted ask. to. And yeah, ask, ask people who are experienced, ask, you know, someone like me, someone like Simon, um, because we will probably be able to give you um insights into like keeping them and and making sure that they stay healthy and good i mean mantises 
are amazing creatures, absolutely, but they do have shorter lifespans than other inverts. Oh, God, <laughs> he's at it again. Um, but in any case, you know, they have shorter lifespans, so that could be that could be a, a no-go for some people. So you just never know. But I, I agree with you. I think orchid mantises are really cool, but I think the spiny flower mantises are where it's at, honestly. If you want yeah. a really amazing uh, mantis, one that's that's absolutely stunning and beautiful and, you know, going to impress your friends or whatever, then the spiny flower mantis is the way to go. Yeah. If you, if you have a look on my shorts, actually, not so long ago, I had one on my uh, finger, spiny flower, and it was just flapping its wings like it was flying, and it, it was doing it for ages and ages, a good 30 seconds, just flapping its wings for no reason. Not moving, not going anywhere, just flapping its wings. It looks really cool. And you can see yeah. all the colors, it, it, you know, as it's flapping. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just love it. Just love it. So and cool. They are, they are cool mantis. There's a... Um... Success breeding them, sadly. I, I got to pair them. Uh, I keep saying last month, and it's not. It's now 2024. Two right. months ago, I... I Paired two of them, and both females died before they knew. Oh no! So I was really upset because I'd spent yeah. a lot of time, a lot of attempts to try and get these guys together, uh, and then I finally did. A week later, and both females were dead. I don't know why. So, you know. Aww. that's a real I drag. I'm sorry to hear that. Tiny nymphs. So I know it's nothing I did. Because sure. I've got them all the way to adults, I've got them to pair, and uh, then they died. So, mm. just it, I just really annoyed me. I mean, decided that's it. I'm not doing them this year. I'm not doing uh, spiny flowers. So oh, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Can I do? Have, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> you know, I, I think at this though, I have got that. I, I think they're just as uh, just as cute, uh, very very similar. It's as though you took a spiny and you've mm. shrunk it down. And that's that's what it looked like to me. There's there's not much difference. How cool is that? Right from the size. So I was so, gonna ask you about that species as well. Is the, the cat faced mantis or the cat cat's uh, eye? Yeah, it's the cat's eye mantis. Those guys are really cool. They're yeah. I I haven't got one now. I did have one. And I haven't got any at the moment. Oh. Um, they always appear angry. 24 hours a day, they appear oh. angry. They've always got their arms out like this. I can't do it how they do it because it hurts. Um, but yeah, they've always got their arms out and looking angry and in a bad mood. <laughs> and they'll just dangle from the top right. in an angry pose constantly. They, they just... They're so much fun to look at, but they they go to six inches. They, they're quite a really big mantis. That I, oh, I that's cool. Know, I didn't know they got that big. African stick mantis, I think is the common name. Okay, I'm not sure about that anyway. But yeah, uh, <laughs> big mantis, a lot of fun to have. They're quite easy to keep, and. Um, they're very easy to breed. So I, I don't know why there isn't more of them around. Yeah, that's interesting. Unless Probably because the they're color. not they're not pretty colors, like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what I always think. Yeah, they don't have to be pretty colored because they're right. they're odd. It's like ghost mantis, they're not pretty colored, but they are odd looking. Right. People like odd looking mantis. Well, that's why I like them, because they're so odd. They're cool. I, I do like them, and if I see any on sale for bulk, I will get a bunch of them and uh, probably breed them this year. Oh, I would love that. I hope you do. It, it's, it's a case of, of somebody popping up and saying, yeah, I, I've just had a massive hatching. Uh, anyone want to buy a bunch of these? And, you know, <laughs> If nobody does that, then you don't get the mantis. Right. Because we have had uh, some species where they 
left the hobby completely mm. because simply nobody's bred them that year and if they've, they've gone you know so yeah it, it's a case of uh, is anybody going to breed them if they all go out with singles then you know well I, and i think that's something that um you guys over in the uk and europe i think you guys do that a lot a little bit better Ooh, a little bit better than we do <laughs> um but I yeah i yeah it's a lot it's probably maybe a little easier but i think it's just you, you know you, you guys you want to keep them in the hobby so you're going to just keep keeping yeah. them keeping them going and i think that's that's really commendable and i appreciate that very much yeah if, you see, if, you, if you see a species that's going out or it's getting bred rare yeah then get two or three breeders you know knocking them out next time and they'll come back again well that's good i'm glad to hear that okay so uh we're coming up to the the last few minutes of the podcast here and uh so we're almost done but i had one last question for you did i miss anything uh well I, we could have spoken for the rest of the night uh, about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh that that is that is a serious question because there's, there's so many things to talk about with them and so many different species and so many uh different things you can say do oh you yeah could, uh, give advice on, on keeping several because they're all different and you can give advice how to breed them how to pair them so yeah it, it's it it's something you could go on and on and on about so you're better off stopping it <laughs> okay otherwise i'll just keep running on <laughs> i like the subject i really really like this subject so yeah i'll just keep going on and on and on it, it, well i have a i have a feeling we'll be touching the subject again we'll come back and we'll probably get a little more in depth with like you know specific species and breeding and and that kind of thing so we'll we'll get into it no worries future right. future episodes I, i'll get some i get some uh i get some people to send me some questions but yeah episodes so i get some really dumb questions asked me uh, <laughs> it'd be nice i'd like to start writing them down uh you should we can answer them sometimes <laughs> i get the same question four or five times a day and it's so dumb it's unbelievable you know so <laughs> i should really write it down instead of just repeating myself i should just write it down yeah. <laughs> yeah all right well i guess it's time for our shameless plug simon uh do you have anything coming up any news welcome back happy new year well yeah happy new year um dead leaves uh, i actually wrote a script for dead leaves not one specific one yeah a script that covers all dead leaves uh, which I'm hoping to do this week. I was waiting for them to hatch because I wanted footage and I missed them hatching. Oh no. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna do the, the video anyway. So I'm gonna make the video probably this week for Dead Leaves uh, and enlighten a little more, hopefully, uh, and, and give reasons why you shouldn't call them Dead Leaves. <laughs> okay, cool. I I like that. So I I'll, I'll be I'll be watching for that video. It sounds wonderful. Um I let's see. Tarantula, I just released uh the video yesterday about the little cuddle calambergi um cuz I rehoused my little juvie. I have a little juvie that I just rehoused um and then I of course made the video and stuff. So I talk all about that tarantula and basically I, you know Kind of like what i do here um and then this upcoming week i have like so many tarantulas to rehouse and i finally have all the materials that i need to do it so be looking out for some more species spotlights um and i also instead of doing the love bites that i usually do for like valentine's i'm actually going to be talking about mature males in the tarantula hobby so uh the guys that are looking for dates and sometimes they just don't find them and so i'm going to talk about why that happens and what we can do about it so look out for that 
But otherwise, I, I watched that earlier. I watched I watched your Karen Bergie earlier. Oh, did did you like it? I did. I did actually like it. Yeah, it was it was quite a good video. Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. I appreciate that. I don't I don't approve the little orange baby you put in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little you orange. Know what I'm talking about little orange baby in, in this video. It's just go subscribe to the channel and go and have a look because yeah, you, I, I I I did share it on Facebook and say to people, say you know, if you're into spiders, go and see Leah because you've been doing it for a long time and uh, I have yeah, you deserve some some press, I think. Thank you, I appreciate that so much, and I I absolutely love your videos. Simon, I feel like I learned so much more about mantises and, and all sorts of insects with you with your channel. So obviously go check out the Mantis Garden, uh, check out Tarantulia, and of course, like and subscribe to Inverticast. Go and find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, um, wherever you can find your podcast is pretty much where we're at. Um, and yeah, that's about all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Simon, so much for being here. I am so excited to start this year uh, fresh and, like, strong. We're starting strong. <laughs> yeah. That's subject we know about. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> no so. spotted free words. Right, you're you're going you're gonna to spoil it, aren't you, for next week's video? Are you gonna, what are you, what are you doing? I want to do Katie Dids. So if we uh, could find, uh, <laughs> put his hands in his head. Is it, is it um, just it's or are you going to go orthoptera? What do you think? Or which one? Orthoptera, like crickets, grasshoppers, cake sticks. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we're going to do that uh, whole classification. So yeah, crickets, grasshoppers, oh, okay. Katie dids, um, all of those little guys, because they used to, they actually used to classify mantids in with that that yeah. family uh but they yeah. they since changed it because clearly mantises are not the same as crickets grasshoppers not a grasshopper. no not at all not at all they're totally yeah. different creatures Can so what she's trying to eat the lid <laughs> she's actually biting the lid <laughs> i love it she, she's tried to get the farm mantis inside i didn't see her climb over there now chewing the lid. Come on, girl. Which is oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, all right, you guys. <laughs> we will see you. We will see everybody uh, next week, and we'll be talking about grasshoppers, crickets, and Katie dance. Thanks so much. See you later. <laughs>